really pressing the filler in for adhesion purposes. I'm going to go back in now and just cheese grade the area to save on the extra sanding. This can be done about 10 to 12 minutes after the application. We've sanded with 80 grit sandpaper. I'm just going to come in and wipe the area to remove some of the dust. We come in with our tack cloth to remove the small pieces of dust. We're going to use the red oxide marhide aerosol primer. We're going to apply two to three more coats of primer to this and let it cure. Just remember, if you're using Bondo glass, Bondo hair, or Bondo body filler, once you get to the primer stage, the repair procedure and steps will remain the same. And just remember, further along this video, we will show you a repair from start to finish. What we have here is your typical rust out. As you can see, the paint bubbling here. Uh, and in some cases, the rust is already completely through. What we're going to do is uh, finish masking this area off. And we're going to use our total prep to clean the area to be free from wax and grease that might be in the area that might prevent adhesion of the filler, the paint, or the primer. So all we want to do is just spray a good wet coat of total prep. And wipe it back off with a clean, dry rag. That's really important. And that will remove any wax or grease that might be in the area that would prevent adhesion. What we're going to do now is take our drill and sand out the, uh, the loose paint and, the loose, uh, paint and rust. We've already sanded down to the bare metal, as you can see, but even sanding sometimes, you're still not able to remove completely all the rust that had pitted into the metal. So the product we want to use now would be one step. This is a rust neutralizer. It will convert the rust into a black primer, and uh, this will kill the rust. Even rust can come back through body filler eventually. So we want to kill this rust first and stabilize it so it won't be any problem with this any longer. You want to apply about two to three thin coats, allowing each coat to dry about three minutes in between coats. It's been 24 hours now since the one step has dried. It requires at least overnight drying before you can go to the next step. In this particular situation, we're going to be applying body filler to the rusted out area. Uh, something very important is that you must sand with about 220 grit first. Uh, also with this area, if you don't have any places that need to be filled, then all it requires is to lightly sand the one step with about 220 grit sandpaper and reprime with another primer and then you can go on to your painting process. We're just going to lightly sand with 220 grit sandpaper here. This is very important. This is going to allow the body filler to adhere to the one step. What we want to do next is come over here and tap the rusted areas in, inward, so that we can apply the body filler next. That'll be our next step. What we're 
we're going to do next is cut out the self adhesive metal patch to kind of bridge over our first rust out here. Just want to trim it so that it bridges over the inner edge of the metal where the hole begins. You want to countersink the metal patch slightly so that it will be below the surface. Any excess, excessive uh, metal patch can be sanded off during the sanding process. One of the most important things when making your own auto body repairs is the mixing procedure of using Bondo. Here at Bondo, we have more calls on our head line from consumers who possibly didn't use enough hardener or used way too much hardener, but the procedure is you know, really simple, and we'll go through that mixing procedure with you now. When mixing the hardener with the body filler, you can always use the rule of thumb of if you use a quarter tube of hardener, you can use a quarter can of the filler. Or if you dip out about a golf ball size, you want to squeeze out about an inch and a half of the cream hardener. Always remember, in 77 degrees Fahrenheit, the body filler will start to gel and harden in about four to five minutes. If it's hotter, it's going to gel faster. If it's colder, it's going to be a little bit slower. So you may have to adjust your hardener to the weather, but uh, stay pretty much within the ratio that we suggest. When mixing the body filler up, you always want to mix it folding the filler over and spread it under. You never want to mix the body filler in a circular motion because that will trap air, which eventually will cause pinholes and will show up in your painted surface. It's easy to tell when you have a good mix of the filler and the hardener because you will have a uniform color. The color will all be the same, and the red hardener and the gray filler will end up a salmon or a real pastel pink color, and we also have the color match spreaders that will that also match the, match the filler. What we're going to do now is apply body filler over the, the screen to bridge over the holes here. You always want to apply body filler in thin layers, making your first wipe, initial wipe, really pressing the filler into the sand scratches. It's always important to apply the body filler in thin layers, building up the thickness. Each thin layer acts as a shock absorber for the next layer and would, and would prevent cracking. What we're going to do now is cheese grade the filler or file it. What this does is saves you a lot of sanding time because it, it cuts down the, the areas that are higher than what they should be and it saves on a lot of sanding. And we're going to be going back and applying additional filler to this. We're going to cut, go ahead and cut down our high spots at this point. What we're going to do now is come back and apply another layer of the body filler. Rubbing my hand over this repair, I can tell that the fender is not back to the original contour yet. So we need to make another quick application of the body filler.